Deborah, and this is another Draw With Me tutorial. You'll notice with this Draw With Me tutorial, I went back to the formatting of showing my hands. Um, I think that a lot of people are able to learn better when they see where I'm actually going in the program. So today we're going to learn how to draw a chippy cat in Procreate at three-quarter view. Um, if you ask me, three-quarter view is one of the harder perspectives to draw in just because um, it's at the side. So it's like when you're viewing a person from sort of an angle and their features on one side is usually bigger than the features on the other side. So I'm going to show you how to, how to navigate that. Um, you'll notice that I'm working a little bit backwards today where I did draw the cat prior, but I'm going to show you how to draw it from scratch. It's just that I need this as, I'm using this as a guide from a previous sticker that I had drawn. So without further ado, we're going to go into Procreate. And once in Procreate, you're going to have and I, again, I outlined this in the OWL tutorial, but I'm going to go back to the beginning. When you open Procreate, you're going to see a gallery. Um, and then you just want to go to Add. And you can either choose from one of the preset canvases here or add a new canvas and change the dimensions. But again, I explained that in the OWL tutorial, which I'll link up top. So for me, I already have a stage open, which is 8.5 by 11 at 300 dpi. My color formatting is normally RGB. I don't know if I had mentioned that in the previous one, but you can set your color formats in settings. So once open, I'm going to go over the brushes that we will be using. Now, the first brush that I like to draw with is Studio Pen. So man. let me go to Layer and then Add New Layer. So you go up top where the squares are and add the, the go to the plus sign and click the plus sign. Again, watch the L tutorial. <laughs> so the first pen that I draw with is Studio. Studio pen. Now this pen I use a lot for drawing, for filling items with color and whatnot. The second pen I'm going to be using will be the texture, which is Signet, which is the one I use a lot for textures. And sometimes I Gaussian blur the texture just to give it a bit of, Signet, give it a bit of a uh, fur looking texture. Now, I believe those are the only two that I used in this one. Um, and that's, that's good because it's easier for you guys to follow along. Uh, so those are the two pens that I'll be using, and you will see what that is like. So let me clear this off, and the way you can do that is go to your layers, which is the two squares, click on the layer panel, and then click clear. Or you can double tap the screen and it'll undo. Or you can press undo with the arrow where the sliders are that adjust your brush size. So. You'll notice that I have a highlighted version of a cat here already drawn, which is a sticker that I drew prior. But I'm going to break down how this is built. So going back to your brush tool, you're going to go to the inking. You're going to go to Studio Pen. You can adjust the spacing, jitter, and the fall off if you want. I don't usually do that. Bring your pen down a little bit and let me explain to you how to do this. So. With the head and the body, you know that we have a, a midline. So the head always has a center line. And because this is a three quarter view, we want the center line to be curved, not straight like how you would do front view, but curved, either right handed curve or left handed curve, depending on what side, like which three quarter you want to do a left three quarter or a right three quarter. So let me draw a proper curve for this. And if you hold down while you're drawing the curve, it'll say edit shape up top and you can click arc and it'll give you anchor points to adjust the curve. You just have to tap arc off or tap on the brush and it'll get rid of that anchor points. So the next thing you want to do is create an eye line. Now, 
This cat's eye line is another arc. And again, I'm going to hold it down and then press edit shape arc and move my arc where the eye line should be. Now I'm using a previous sticker as a guide, but you can still follow along without the sticker underneath. This just makes it faster for me. So once that's done, you can erase any axis lines here. I don't need all of these. Once that's done, you want to figure out where your center line for the body will be. Now the body again is turned. So what I probably should have explained beforehand is that say if you're looking at a person from over here, this is where you are and you're staring at that person. I know that looks really creepy. Then everything on this side will be larger and everything on this side will be slightly smaller because of your perspective. Your perspective is like this. So this side would be larger and this side would be smaller given your field of vision is to the left. So I'm just gonna get rid of my little creepy dude that's staring at my cat. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, so we'll call this the eye line because that's what that is. And then this is the center line or whatever you want to call it. So we have to find the middle section of the body and I'm going to say it's here, which is again, another arc. And I want my cat to be a little bit fat. So I'm going to curve the line to make my cat somewhat fatter. Then you want to find the shoulder line, which is here. And that's where the arm connects with the body. So now we're going to break the cat down into shapes. Now that we have our center line and our eye line and the body center line and the shoulder line, let's put shoulder here. Let's break this cat down into shapes. So I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to look at the head and of course the head is a circle. So, we're going to start out with a circle or oval, more of an oval than a circle, but so you're going to want to draw a circle over your eye line and your center line so that you can figure out where your cat shape should be. So again, if you hold, if you draw a rough circle and hold down your pen in procreate, it'll come up with circle or ellipse. Um, either one will come up with anchor point, four anchor points that you can adjust. I like to adjust it. I don't like to do a, a full-on circle because I know that my cat isn't exactly a full-on circle. It's more of an oval shape. Click on a brush tool or any tool that you need to get off of that. And then I'm going to draw the body. So the body is a nice plump oval as well. Then again, I held down so I can edit shape. I gotta do that again because they. Okay. So hold down, edit shape, and you can conform your shape however you want. You know that the neck connects, so you want your neck to connect to the circle. And again, if ever you're lost, you can always ask questions in the comments section, or you can always watch the owl tutorial because the owl tutorial will go into the tools more specific. Um, anyway, moving on. So the arms are ovos. Yep. And again, another oval but a smaller oval because this is a three quarter view. The ears are triangles, but they're skewed triangles. So they're not exact. They're just sort of, you curve one end, you curve the other, and then you curve the bottom. You curve and then curve and then another curve. 
Keep in mind that when you're doing an animal, if you see them at three quarter view, this ear, you will not see the inner part of the ear. You'll only see the side of the ear. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing the details. Now the foot here is a circle and then an oval. Same thing here, circle or ovo-ish circle. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it. Ovo-ish circle. That's what I'll call it. And then another circle. So that looks good. And the tail is a little, you can add that in as an oval if you want, or you can just leave it and then draw on a tail after the fact. Uh, the tail is more organic looking, so it wouldn't really be a, I mean, it could be a cylinder, but that's how we break down our characters. So all characters can be broken down into shapes, as I said in the owl tutorial. Um, you just have to look at something and know what shape it is. So say I'm looking at a pop can, we know that that's a rectangle and, and two circles on the ends, which makes a cylinder. Uh, you know that if you see a box, that's a cube um, with details. So anything that you see in life can be broken down into shapes. And this is how the cat is broken down. So I'm gonna merge these two layers because it's just an outline of what the cat should look like. And the way I do that is I take layer two and layer three, although you should be naming your layers. I don't normally do that. I, it's a bad habit, but I don't do it. Um, and then use your fingers and squeeze them together. And that'll merge the shape, the, the whole layer together. So now it's all on one layer. So then we're gonna add a new layer by clicking the plus button and then take this slider on layer two where it says normal, push back the opacity to, I don't know, say 40%, eh, maybe a little bit lighter. So 30% here. And then we're gonna start putting in the details. Now, sometimes I don't, uh, when I draw, sometimes I'll put in the detail, but it will still be a little bit rough because like in the detail phase, and then I have to draw over it again uh, just to clean up the lines. But in this case, because I already drew the cat before, uh, I can just look at the lines that are already existing. So with your brush on Studio Pen Still, you're gonna pick whatever color you want your cat to be. So say you wanna draw a black cat. Um, then I would use a pen that's maybe like a little bit gray or brownish gray uh, instead of the brown color that I was drawing in. Uh, if you're doing a white cat, I would say a light gray. Um, and this is for the line work. So my style is very much cell style. It's very much uh, line work and then filling in the colors and then shading and then adding in the details. So I'm gonna make my cat a little bit of a grayish black color. So for the outline, I'm gonna make it darker. This is something new that I'm doing. It wasn't something that I was doing in the owl tutorial where I used all pretty much black ink. This is more like um, whatever color I choose, I choose a darker color to outline. So. Let's start with the ear. Now that you see where the shapes are, you see the line work for the shapes, you can now begin to draw in the details. So I think that my pen is too small. I'm gonna slide up a little bit to make it bigger. Sure. So you don't wanna draw this part that's connecting because with an animal and their ear is attached to their head, so you don't wanna draw in anywhere it's attached. You wanna leave a space where it's attached. And then I want an inner ear piece. So I'm gonna draw a curve. And again, anytime you draw a curve, you can hold down and then edit the arc. And I'm gonna do a little tuft. And the way that I do tufts, which is very similar to what I did in the L tutorial, is just a bit of a curve. So I still think my pen tool is a bit too dark. I'm gonna lift that up a little bit to a lighter gray. 
And then I'm going to drag and drop this into the line work. This is how you fill objects. So again, that's what I explained in the owl tutorial. You can draw a closed object, drag and drop the picker tool, and then put it in to fill the object. So if you have line work and you don't like the color, you can always drag and drop another color from the picker and put it into the line work. So here I want the cat to have, here I want the cat to have a bit of hair. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the ear. Curve, curve, curve. And then the ear here too is connected. So you don't want to draw where it's connected. You just want to draw the outline. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, although right now this thing is not curving the way that I want it to. So there, it's curving. Erase this. Now here, the head connects to the ear, so there should be a little line here, but no line here. Because you want the ear to connect, but you don't, you want the forehead or the head to be in front of this ear. Because we're looking at the character in quarter view perspective, we want to have um, the head have de definition in front of the back ear because of where you're looking. So you just want to start a line, but you don't want to start it all the way here because you still want the ear to be connected. So once you have that done, you can go to the other side and continue your line work. And I want the cat to have fur on both sides of its cheeks to make it look kind of cute. So I'm going to make the fur kind of like, again, the owl tutorial, which is a half sort of arc. That one's too far. Okay. Other side, the same thing. Just keep going. And the chin is a half arc again. So we're gonna go all the way around and then we're gonna connect it. It's a bit too much there. So I'm using the eraser tool to erase a bit of the ink. And then now I'm gonna draw in the body. So the body is basically a half circle. So you're gonna to wanna to connect the head all the way around so that it creates a half circle. And you're gonna go a little bit off because you wanna add in that tail. And here, where the arm is connected, you don't wanna draw this part because, again, the arm has to be connected to the body somewhere. So you just kind of want to draw half the arm, not the whole thing. And as you're going, you can add in details, like little details here and there. So for underarms, I like to do like a little crease. And the paw would be like a little half circle. And if you want, you can add in a little bit of claws if you which is just a half triangle. <laughs> and then here too, I'm going to add in a bit of hair. And the one thing you want to note here is that the belly, because my cat is kind of, this cat is kind of chubby. So the belly would be in the belly here would be in front of this arm. Again, because it's three quarter view, because of where the person is looking at the character. So what you wanna do is draw on the belly first, but don't go all the way down, just part way down. I actually think it's better if I go this way. Okay. Now with this arm, you wanna add in, same thing. You don't want to draw the whole ovo, you just want to draw a part of it. The shapes are just there to sort of guide you in knowing where everything is built and everything is structured. Oh, those nails are way too long. 
yeah, the shapes are always a good like beginner area to start just to know where all your pieces and all your body parts go. So now we're going to do the legs. So we didn't go all the way down and the, this leg here is in front and it should be larger just because of the view. Again, the camera would be over here or the person would be over here looking. So this view here would be larger. So we're going to go and draw part of the leg, one arc, like this. And then we're going to draw a half circle, like this. And you can erase the other area here if you want, just to clean up the line work a little bit, make it look more connected. Just going to go over it again. Okay, same thing here, you're going to do half an arc, erase, then you're going to do another half here. Now if I didn't have the other cat underneath, I wouldn't know that the tail goes there. I would have to draw the whole circle and then put in the tail and then erase my shapes afterward. But because I know where the tail is going, it should be fine. So the tail goes here. And we want to round off the tail. and clean up any line work that we don't need. Okay, so that's part of it, but we also need to fill in the inner parts. So usually with the eye line, a little below the eye line is the nose line. If you want to add that in, you don't have to, but usually below the eye line, a little bit below is where the nose would go. So you just want to do a half arc for the nose and then like a little ovo and you can color that ovo in. And the mouth is a little bit below the nose. So you're going to want to do half an arc and then another half arc. So I don't like how that line is looking there, so I'm just going to erase it. And again, it is a lot of eyeballing, like not, you know, you don't have to make it perfect, but try to clean it up as much as you can. <laughs> then I want to add in whiskers, so I'm just going to do a line, three lines, one, two, and three. Same with the other side, one, two, and three. And if I want to do an eye color, I'm going to choose for myself, I'm going to choose green because that's what my cat Phantom's eye color was. So anytime you do a different color than the one that you currently have, I would normally create a new layer uh, just so that I can adjust the color if I need to. And it's always the same color that's being adjusted. So the eye is on the eye line and it's a circle. So you can draw a rough circle, then hold down, edit shape, and click circle, and it'll automatically change it into a circle. And then I'm going to fill that in. And over here on the other side, again, I need another eye. That's not a good one, so I'm going to try and do it again. And this size should be a touch smaller than the one on the left, again, because everything on the left is a little bit bigger from the viewpoint that you're drawing in. <laughs> and then I want to draw in the paws. So the paws, I kind of want to make them pink. So let's choose a nice... And again, if, if you're going into the color palette here, you can choose to have the color as a disc or as classic or whatever you feel comfortable working in. I usually like working in the classic. And I'm gonna pick a pink color. So pink, a little bit darker because you want it to be a little bit of a darker color than what you're coloring in. So again, it's a different color. So add another layer. 
You can draw a circle. Another circle. That's fine. And here again, circle. One, two, three, and four. Now, obviously I don't want this to be here. So because it's another layer, I can move it underneath the body layer. <laughs> So I can hold down my pen on five and drag it down to underneath two. And then as you can see, it's now behind the black line. Actually, it's behind the trace too, hang on. So it's now behind the black line. And uh, that's the beauty of having different colors on different layers. You can move it around so that it's behind the line that you want it to be as opposed to having to erase all of it. So once you hide the two layers underneath or the one layer of the shapes underneath, so to hide it, you uncheck the box. You'll see now that you have a cat, a little fat cat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start coloring the cat and uh, making him look nice and shiny. <laughs> so these three layers are now your line work. Underneath the layer that has the black lining, or even underneath the paw lining, even underneath all the lines, drag it a new layer underneath all of these lines, these three, the body line, the paw line, the eye line. Use a, whatever color you drew the cat in, make sure you use a little bit lighter color than that and color in your cat. So I like to use the Studio Pen Tool at its biggest size. So I slide the slider here, and then I like to color it in. And I try to follow the line work as closely as possible. Sometimes I go outside of the line, which is fine. You can clean that up after. Because after we do this, we are going to basically fill the whole character in. So let's do that. Drag and drop. And if you've done it correctly, like you've closed the whole shape and you drag and drop, it'll fill the cat only. If you do this and you left this area open, if you drag and drop, it's going to fill the whole stage. So you undo that. You have to make sure that when you're coloring in, you've closed the line. So now I'm just going to erase what I don't want. And this is the stuff I don't want. So I'm going to do that real quick. <laughs> and it's really, really good to clean up your work, like your base color, so that when you shade in, you're not going to be shading in outside of your character just because you forgot to clean it. Um, if you are following along on pencil and paper, um, you know, just, I know that you can't really create the shapes as well, but try to follow along as best you can. Um, the same principles apply without the layers. <laughs> uh, just think of the layers as sort of like the eraser or uh, whatnot. Just make sure that you uh, do your basic shapes, draw and then draw your character in but I would do your basic shapes in one of those um, color pencils, like the light ones that can erase pretty easily. And then I would use like a pencil to draw over it and maybe use an ink to make it uh, as solid as the character here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my layers and create a little glare for the eyes. Um, what I do with that is I normally go to create a new layer on top of the eyes, go to a white color at the paint palette and make sure you have it set to studio pen. Then wherever you want that glare to be, sorry, bring up your brush size a little bit. You can put a dot here, depending on where you want your glare to be. So I want it to be, actually, I want it to be on the other side, this side.
so that's a little so just make sure it looks somewhat even then you're going to take your brush tool and since I chose green, I'm going to go light green. If you chose purple, go lilac. If you chose red, go pink. So I'm going to take the light green and I'm going to use a brush that I didn't <laughs> talk about in the beginning of it, but it's only for this tiny little part. So go to the brush and choose airbrush, soft brush. Bring your brush down to about two. Go in and just color very lightly inside of the eye. Not liking that. Make the brush a little bit bigger. So again, make sure you zoom out. And if you see my gestures, it's my hand going in and out. Uh, that's me zooming out of the canvas. And I just want to make sure that it's even. And right now it is not. So when I run into this issue where it doesn't look even, usually I'll Gaussian blur it, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to try this again. It's just a bit of, maybe the color is too light. Go darker a little bit. And my brush is too big, so two to three. And you're just going to draw like a little highlight underneath on the eye. So prior to doing this, you may want to figure out where your light source is. And the way to do that is to basically figure out what area the sun is or the light source. So if you add a new layer and you say this is the sun. So if my sun is here, then everything on this side of the character is going to be lighter than the left side of the character. The left side of the character is going to have darker shading than the right side, which is why I put the glare of the eye on the right side of the character. So that's how you figure out where your light is going to be. Um, you can also use, if you have a 3D program, you can always go into a 3D program and put a light source on a sphere and it'll show you how to shade your character. So we're going to shade this character and the way we're going to do that is go to your base color, click new layer, click multiply, and then click a tap on the layer and go to clipping mask. So let's go to brush and choose studio pen. And basically what you're wanting to do is now shade in your character. So before I used to use a two-tone shade, which meant that I only shaded one, one shade of darker than like a darker color than the base color. But now I tend to do maybe two or three. Um, and I find it gives it a bit more dimension. So we're going to start shading. So we know the left side is darker. So we're going to start shading the left side. And because I want to see my line work, I'm going to go to back to the layer that I'm shading on, click the multiply and push back the opacity to maybe about 50%. And once you do clipping mask, you'll notice that wherever your base color is, you're not going to color outside of that base color, which is why it's very important to make sure that your base color is clean. I want my brush to be a little bit bigger. So underneath the head should have a shade. And again, this is a judgment call. I like, like I usually put shades wherever I see that the body is connecting or overlapping. So like, I think that there should be a shade by the nose a little bit and whatever looks right to you. And I think that underneath the head should be a darker shade. So when I put in the second shading, there'll be more of a darker shade underneath the head than above the head. So that's tough should have a little shade here. The arm should have a bit of shading here.
Again, the left side of the body needs shading. Underneath the tail needs shading. Maybe a little bit here where the tail meets the body can have a bit of shading. And I don't, I want it to be more curved, so I'm gonna curve that a little more. Well, maybe not. Let me shade in here first. So underneath the arm and where the creases are, I like to shade as well. Make that a bit more curved to give it more dimension. Okay, yep. Underneath the arm, as I said, a little bit here too. I'm just gonna erase a little bit because I think it went a bit too far. Curve that a little bit, make this curved. And again, like it's a judgment call on your part. Uh, this is how I like to shade mine, so that's what I'm doing. You can do the same thing I'm doing or you can shade it however you like. And I think under the belly needs a bit of shading here by the leg. So again, I like to shade wherever it's connected, like where the lines are connected to say the body needs, yeah, you know, say the body's in front, so the leg behind would be shaded wherever it's connected. So I think a bit of shading should go here where the crease, the head connects to the ear. I also think a bit of shading should go underneath the tufts here and the ear should have a little bit of shading there Gonna fix this up a little bit more. Same thing with here. And I also like to make my shading, shading a bit rounded to give it more of a, uh, more of a shape. So now that we have one layer shaded, I'm gonna go back to my layers up here, push it back to maybe 40 to 30% maybe 40. Then I'm gonna create another layer on top by the plus sign. Go to multiply again, click on tap the layer and then click clipping mask and push back the opacity to maybe about 50% here. This is gonna be the darker shade, the one on top. So you're gonna use the same color you used for the, the base color of the body but because the layer is multiplied is why it shows up darker. So now it's gonna be another layer, but with a darker shade of the same base color. I'm gonna change this to a little bit lighter than what it is. I'm gonna go down to maybe um, 25% because I think it's too dark and I cannot see my lines anymore. So there we go. You wanna stay within the sh shaded area. You just want to shade where you think that it would be darker, where the shadows would be darker. So I think the shadow would be darker underneath the arm. So I'm gonna shade in underneath the arm a little bit. And the leg. And of course the left hand side of the body would be darker as well, so just follow along with the lines. Behind the leg should have more shading as well. Behind the arm here should have a bit darker shading too. Maybe a little bit underneath the arm here. Maybe I'll have this connect so that it's not so broken. Yeah, I think I'll have it connect. 
So again, it's whatever you think looks good. I'm not liking how that's looking though, so let's just do that. And I think I'll leave it unconnected. I'll go back to my original. <laughs> Okay, so here should have a little bit of sharing. Same with here. Okay, so now we're going to take the pink, the, actually I'm going to clean up the other one here, this one, just a touch. And I'm going to change the shading a little bit. So the good thing about this program is you can always change uh, shadings to be as light or dark as you want. Um, and then I'm going to I'm going to change the base color too because mine is a little bit too light. So I go to the magic wand tool, go to hue, saturation and brightness, and I can change this to be a bit darker or lighter depending on how I feel. I think a bit darker would be nice. And then I'm going to darken the lines of the body a little bit more. So again, it's good. This program is good for when you want to, um, adjust things after the fact. If you've done one that's a specific color, you can change your color easily using the uh, hue, saturation, or brightness, or you can change the fill. So we're gonna go in ahead and shade the pink paw and the ear. So go and create a new layer on top of the base color of the paw and the ear. Do the same thing, go to multiply on the end, tap the layer, click clipping mask, Pick the color that's there. So pick the pink color that you chose or whatever color you chose and start shading in similar to what you did with the body or rather exactly the same as what you did to the body. Wherever you feel there should be a shadow or shading. So I think there should be one here and I think there should be one here. Now that that's done, you're going to want to create a little bit of texture for the fur. So pick the base color of the body and the way to do that is hold your hand down and then see that it's picked at the top here. Choose the brush that I discussed in the beginning, which is Textures Signet. Push the brush all the way to the biggest size and then take your brush and actually first you want to create a layer on top of that clipping mask, then multiply again. And this should be on top of all of the layers that from the base layer of the body all the way up to the two shading. And then on top of that should be where your layer is. Take the brush, the signet brush and just lightly brush in. And you'll see that it's creating a texture on the clipping mask, like it's clipping masking over the shape of the body and it's creating a texture. So the texture is a little dark and a little rough. So I'm going to take that layer on top of the shaded layer and pull back the opacity to maybe about 45%. Then I'm going to go to the magic wand tool and I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and to blur an object, you just want to take your pen and slide it across. So you can blur it as much as you want, but I'm going to blur it to maybe about one. This gives it sort of a soft texture and it makes it look a little bit more like fur. Maybe I'll blur it to two, two. And now that all that is done, you can now put in some highlights. So wherever the light is going to hit the character is where you want to put your highlights in the highlights. Um, you want to do it underneath the line layer so it doesn't go over the lines. Make sure that it doesn't have this little arrow, which is the clipping mask arrow. So create a new layer on underneath all of these line layers. And again, that's why I say it's important to label your layers. Um, I don't do it because I know what layers are what, but you know, if I were going to do it, I'd put like, you know, body line, you know, solid base color for body, like that kind of thing. Um, I would label my layers if, uh, if I didn't know where they were. So pick the white color, pick your studio pen under inking, push it down to maybe about six and start shading in wherever you think the light would hit. 
So I know that my sun was on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna say, okay, well, it's gonna hit there. It's gonna hit here. And I feel like this gives it a bit more dimension by putting in the little bit of white highlights and it's kind of a style. It's more of a cell style, you know what I mean. Um, so here and here, I think that the light would hit, I think the light would hit the stomach area and a little bit of the fur here, the arm maybe, and the belly here. Just a little bit. I think it would hit the paw and I think it would hit this leg here. The way to determine where to shade usually for um, the white lines is usually objects that are in front. Like this arm is in front so it should have, the light would hit it first. This leg is in front so the light would hit it first. You know, the belly is sort of in front, so the light would hit that area. The tail, too, is somewhat in front, so again, you put a little bit of shading on the tail as well. A little bit more shading here. And some on the paw pads, why not? You know, again, it's a judgment call. It's whatever you think looks good on the nose here I think yeah why not and some on the ear here too a little bit more here Okay, then you're gonna wanna put a little bit of the glare on the nose. So you can go to the body line layer, this layer, and you can add in a little bit of a glare on the nose. So one line and a dot. And there you have it. So hopefully you have a cat staring back at you. <laughs> um, and hopefully you were able to follow along with this tutorial. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. I'm saying hopefully a lot. Um, but yeah, if you like the content, like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you watch the owl tutorial. And again, I'll leave a link up top to that. Uh, that one explains all the tools, tips and tricks within Procreate uh, for beginners. Uh, later on, I might do some tutorials on animation or um, other simple drawings that uh, you'll be able to follow along with and maybe go into some of the tools and how I use them uh, to make stickers and to make uh, personal work. So yeah, um, thanks for watching and yeah, I hope you learned something new and leave a comment in the comments section.